now, though. It's only been out two weeks. Have you already binge-watched it? I haven't yet, but One Day is already the most-watched show on Netflix. Well, Lucy Cave, Paul Carrick, Brunson and Dr Amir join me now. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, Lucy, it is making everybody feel a little bit nostalgic because it's set in that era as well of, sort of the 80s and 90s. Um, but it is making people think about their own... You know, it, yeah. past loves. It and really stuff. is. And like you said, 15 million views on Netflix. It's hit the public consciousness hard. But yeah, it's just making us all kind of reminisce about <laughs> first love and, and heartbreak. The old tear coming down <laughs> the face of the. <laughs> you have to be careful you're watching it with. Maybe it's a binge watch on your own, this yes. show, and not with your partner. <laughs> um, but Amir, is there any science behind why we never really forget our first loves? There is science, really, because even though love is magic, and a lot of it is magic, I want to say. <laughs> Kind but there of, is some of. hormones as well. So it usually happens at a time where we're developing both emotionally, physically, mentally, and apparently our memories are at their peak at the ages between 15 and 26, which is generally when we get our first love, so it's etched in our memory. But our hormones also go haywire, so about 90% of first love apparently is... Ho I'm really <laughs> nervous <laughs> telling you this. <laughs> I was like, you're doing well. Oh, you're doing thank well. You. <laughs> <laughs> our sex hormones go up, oestrogen and testosterone, so that gives us... a, a a rise in our libido. Oxytocin, that love hormone, goes up, so that connection and trust mm. also is involved. But also, something called serotonin, one of our brain uh, neurochemicals, goes down, which is interesting. And we find this in people with OCD. And that actually gets you obsessed, that infatuation you have with someone. And it, alongside that, our stress hormone cortisol also comes down. So that is why when, we, when we're with these people, all these beautiful things are going on inside of us. You love them, you want to spend every minute with them, but the minute they go, you completely, like, are flawed you and you <laughs> want to just be with them because the hormones just go back to normal. We want those hormones. Yes. yes. And, yes. Paul, do you ever really get over your first love? The quick answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that you don't get it. You, you will get over, but you will never forget, mm -hmm. right? Because we will go on and we can love multiple people throughout our life. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we never forget is because of everything that Amir just said. We are imprinted. Mm -hmm. We are flushed. And the person who's done a lot of this research is a friend of mine, Dr. Helen Fisher, who shows that when we're flooded like that, we will never forget it. Mm. It's a feeling we'll never forget. Yeah, it's amazing. But what do you do if it's actually affecting your current relationship? Because, you know, back in the day when Facebook became big, I know I'm talking many, many years, like 20 years ago, <laughs> but, you know, the stories of like, oh my God, did you hear so-and-so's husband went back on Facebook and found his primary school girlfriend, <gasps> yeah. right? And so there was a lot of those stories around back then yes. about people reconnecting. And, and when you reconnect... And then if it can affect your current relationship, it, right? it, it, it can, but you know what, on the reconnection is there's a researcher, Dr. Nancy Kalish, right? She showed that when you have reconnected with the first love, 70% success rate. Oh. 70 percent success <laughs> right. everyone's going back yeah. to their first love i'm right. nervous now <laughs> <laughs> right but but doesn't it depend how it ended it what if it ended really bad and they cheated on you or something it, it depends how it ended great point it also depends if you're emotionally available that's very important yes but if you feel like it's impacting your current relationship you need to identify what was it that yes. you were missing not from the person but in the relationship yes. maybe it was emotional intimacy maybe it was active listening and then, here's the hard part, is you want to talk to your current partner about what is missing. Mm. And you often we describe it as the spark. When we go, the spark's gone. No, 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 Isn't, but you need more. Is that, that's something else, is it? That's not the sort of, yeah. You, you need to be able to identify. Maybe it's the emotional intimacy, right? Yeah. Maybe it's the fact that uh, you're not, you, you, you don't feel as if they're listening, you're listening, but you need to identify it precisely. All three of us are literally... Yeah. <laughs> 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 we're practically we making notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's the seventy percent. Is the but the big thing. You know he's going to invoice us for this, don't you? It's like a session for him. Um, Lucy, now. Yes. Oh, happily in our relationship. Do you remember your first? I do remember my first time. I mean, I used to keep a diary though, so I literally would write everything, good and bad. Great, great detail about my first love, but don't worry, I, uh, I'm not emotionally available <laughs> anymore if my husband is watching. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be one of the 70%. Yeah. Um, and do I Amir, mean, can I ask you, do you remember? Oh, yeah, totally. You know, I was at university, I was completely infatuated. Sadly, it wasn't reciprocated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was still my first yeah. love. Yeah. It I was will their loss. Remember. Look at him now. Their loss. Look exactly. Him now. Look at me Look now. At him now. Look at him. Yeah, I get the last <laughs> laugh. Yeah, and Paul. 
No comment. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Says the love expert. Uh, that's what we should have said. We got ourselves yes, into I'm trouble. Into trouble. Yes. <laughs> Can I just quickly ask you? Love at first sight. Yes. Is that a real thing? I don't believe. Scientifically. It. No. It's limerence at first sight. It's so awesome. it's limerence. It's infatuation, but it's not love. I think for love you need friendship, you need emotional intimacy, and most importantly, you need commitment. Yeah, but what happens when you go, I just knew. I knew in the first minute. And then actually they've been married for 30 years. No, in, in, in psychology, it's called rosy retrospective. Mm. It's this whole idea that everything in the past was better. Mm. Even though yeah, you yeah. didn't know the person. You didn't know them, you know? You mm. didn't know them. You need to have spent time. You need shared experiences. You need deeper emotional intimacy. Otherwise, it's just lust. I'm going to book a session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. It's like a pop-up clinic yeah. all of a sudden. Amazing. That is so interesting. I love all that.